about a year and a half ago, we got these two beautiful ARS racks for our adult bull snakes, as well as a couple other large species of snakes that we keep. And we love these racks so much that we just bought two more racks to upgrade our snakes into. One of them is going to be another one of this large style of rack for more bull snakes that are now big enough to move into them. So we'll have three of these racks now. And the second one we're getting today has slightly smaller bins, but more of them to move our hog nose snakes into. I'm so excited. I just got a call from the delivery driver that they are due here in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to race upstairs, make sure we're ready to receive them. And then we are going to set up these awesome new snake racks for our snakes today. Oh my gosh, they're here. The new racks are here. Yeah, you want to push them? Yeah, I can push. Oh my gosh. Ah, there it is. This I believe is the smaller of the two racks and he is grabbing the bigger one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That thing is huge. There it is. That's the big one. Setting this one up first. Yeah, I figured this one we can just pop into place because the space is already open. And then we can move all the snakes out of the current racks out of the way, put that one in place, put them in, and stay la vie. Woohoo! New racks! Ugh, why can't I open anything? This is like opening a present on Christmas, though. Oh, wait, wait. There goes our, our delivery guy. Bye! You ready? Ready in three, two, one. It's so beautiful. Oh. So to bring this inside, each section or each level is its own piece. So Ed and I are just gonna have to carry each piece in one at a time and then bring it downstairs one at a time. But then it'll puzzle together really easily. So it's actually pretty easy to move this thing inside. So here's something kind of cool that ARS does that I forgot about the last ones. To prevent the rack from shifting around during shipments, like on the trucks, they actually bolt it to the pallet itself. So you do have to remove those bolts, but it still keeps it a lot safer. And now we attach the wheels. We have the base upside down. Wheel me. We get to set up this world's largest power strip. This thing is epic. <laughs> there we go, that's in place. There we go. All right, should we push it in? Oh, ta-da, it's in place. And now for my favorite part. Ooh. So pretty. It's all set up with a thermostat and it's in place. It looks awesome. Heat mats are warming up and now is probably my very favorite part other than peeling off I guess the stickers in the front. Setting up the bins themselves. So I'm going to fill each one of these up with substrate, get some caves ready, water dishes ready, and then we'll show you all the snakes we're gonna move into this new rack. completely set up and now it's time to put the snakes in so I figure we'll go from top to bottom it's not just bull snakes we actually have a couple different species we're throwing in these too but let's start with the top in the first bin is one of the first ever snakes we produced Stripey the bull snake he is from our very first clutch ever which was between Janet and Brad our bull snakes Janet uh, the dad is no longer with us unfortunately he was very old when we even first got him but Brad is still doing great and she's actually living right across the room now from her son and the reason why we kept Stripey is because he's got these beautiful stripes down his sides so he's getting big he's doing great and should be big enough to breed next year here you go buddy here look Go check it out! 
He's like, whoa, what am I going to do in here? He's going to lick the wall. Yep, he is his father's son. Yep. Okay, next up is Stripey's sister, Hannah. They're the, both the same age. Hannah is just the biggest girl from that clutch that we hatched. Here she is. She is about three years old now, would you say? Yeah. Three years old? Yeah, so she's not like huge. We're, we're not power feeding them or anything. She's a great eater. We just feed her. We actually are feeding her every other week a small rat. So we don't want her to get fat, do we? No, we don't want you to get fat. I'm sure she would eat every week though if we oh, let her. I'm sure she would. Yes, and then you'd get fat. So she should be big enough to breed in maybe about a year. Here you go, Hannah. Check it out. So many things to smell. Where are you going to go? And into the back. Aww. I try to set up all the bins to have a cave in the warm end, a cave in the cool end, of course a water dish, and a fake plant or two, and then finally some structure to climb on and explore. Nice, she's gonna love this. Yeah. Next up is a white-sided bull snake. This is... Was she a Craigslist find or a Facebook find? Uh, a friend of yours find. A friend, yeah, a friend of mine, Angie, thank you so much for lining this up. Uh, someone was unable to keep her, so my friend lined it up that we would go and adopt her. She was listed as a ghost morph, but I'm pretty sure she's just white-sided. I don't think she's hypo as well. Uh, but, I mean, we're going to just have to breed her to find out, but I'm pretty sure we've just got a beautiful white-sided bull snake here. There you go, little girl. Are you going to go into... Yep. <laughs> Well, that's not very exciting. No, that, that's that then. But there's the enclosure. Yeah, it's. But I think she's, she's gonna like it. She disappeared. She just wants to go in the cave. Yep. Okay, that's not even the warm side. <laughs> She'll find it. Yeah. And we have one more bull snake going into this rack. That is our red male. They're all in travel containers right now to bring him down here. He doesn't live in this, of course. This is the adult male red line bull snake that we have. We sadly didn't produce any red babies this year, but we figured he wouldn't mind being put in the adult rack down here with the other bull snakes of ours. Oh, he's also really wiggly and very food motivated. So here you go, buddy. So wiggly. Here you go. Check out your driftwood. Oh. Kind of weird. Are you just not going to move? You're just going to sit here? <laughs> you're always wiggly. This is the one time you're going to sit still? Like everything smells so funny now. <sighs> White sided came out. Did she? Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Aww, she's saying hi. Alright, well I'll set you in there. You move when you're ready, I guess. Oh, look at those long tongue flicks. Oh yeah, he's not too sure what to think. He'll settle in. Yep. Alright, there you go buddy. And that was the last bull snake we're putting in this rack, so the last two snakes are going to be our Anaconda Tiny and our Burmese Python Shika. Should we do Tiny or Shika first? Probably Shika. Okay, we'll make everyone wait for the yep, Anaconda. Yeah, everybody wait okay. for Tiny. He's gotten big, guys. Here is Shika! She's just a plain old normal wild type Burmese Python. She came from a very lovely family who got her as a baby but was unable to keep her. So I've always wanted a wild type Burm to tell people, or like to teach classes what they look like in the wild because all we have otherwise are albino Burmese Pythons. So when I talk about them and like them taking over the Everglades, I bring her with, or before COVID, I brought her with to show them what they look like in the wild. And she is such a sweetheart. She's gonna be great. Great for programs, even when she gets older. So, let's put you in your new bin! Shika, look! I added some colorful flowers to yours. I still want to get some driftwood in here. I kind of ran out, but uh, I'll add some when I, when I get some more. Oh, she's gonna go right into the flowers. Oh, she's so pretty. Mm-hmm. She'll be able to stretch out, move around. Yeah, she get can. Get nice cocoa blocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we found that the cocoa blocks hold in humidity really well, so uh, we, we tend to use those for a lot of our tropical snakes. That's a really nice substrate. All right, should we move on to Tiny? Yes! Aw, Tiny, are you going to come out? He was tongue flicking. Aw. Oh. Oh, he's got chunky. Yeah, he has. As you can see, he's too big for his soaking dish now, yeah. so he's getting an upgraded bin and soaking dish. Now let's see if Emily gets bit. Come here, Tiny. Oh, good, you're in shed. Okay, he won't want to eat me. Hi, buddy. I'm not food. We're still working with him. You still really like food, don't you? Hey, buddy. Aww, you are such a cool snake. Now, we're putting him in this bin just temporarily, or in this rack just temporarily, because actually the framework of his new display enclosure starts this weekend. So he's going to have an 8 by 8 by, actually a 9 by 8 by 8 foot tall enclosure at the zoo. So for now, we're just kind of putting him in a bin to, for the time being. Yeah, he's getting big, too. Is he getting heavy? 
Yeah, he's he's a solid snake for sure. Hi, how's it going? We're feeding him every other week as well. Uh, kind of like with the bull snakes, we don't want to power feed him at all. So he's getting a medium rat every other week. Tiny here is a green anaconda. There are two different types of anacondas out there, the yellow and the green. The yellows don't get as big as the green, and that's why we wanted a green and wanted to adopt one from a home who couldn't keep them any longer, is because, I mean, if we're gonna have an anaconda, we may as well have the larger of the two species, because we'll have plenty of room for one. Yep. Tiny, let's go into your temporary bin. Oh, oh, oh I have no, to... There's I have no to, water yet Oh, that's there. right. I have to fill it up with water. Hang on. I love this dude. I'm so glad we got him. Mm -hmm. You're an awesome snake, Tiny. Yes, you are. Should we check out your bin, even though it's temporary? Now it has water. Yeah, now we have water. Here you go. Check it out. Ooh. Not gonna throw any plants in with him? Uh, I don't have any plants right now. Ah. Yeah, I, I also ran out. I ran out for the two bottom bins, so I still have to fill it up with some enrichment in there. I have to find driftwood and some plants for him, but yeah, I will be adding more to that one. He'll just squish it anyway. But... Oh yeah, you won't care. Boop, 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 boof. Go check it out! Do something other than sitting in one spot. Yeah. Well, I guess that's where he's gonna yep. sit. I guess he approves of that spot. That's about as fast as he moves, guys. Yeah, they're very slow, methodical. Don't trust the movie Anaconda. <laughs> So now we are going to actually take a little bit of a break and Ed and I are going to set up the second rack tomorrow because I have to edit and Ed has to work, work for his full-time job. Right, so we're work. going to come back tomorrow and set up the second rack, which I'm honestly even more excited for. Yeah, we already have these. Like, we have it there and we have it there. So we knew what this thing was going to be like. Mm -hmm. And it's just as we expected. Yep. It's another amazing rack, but the second one is new to us. Yeah, we don't know how that... That one's in a smaller box, too, but we know it's just as tall, so... Yeah. How does that one go together? New puzzle, new challenge. We'll learn tomorrow. Okay, good night, Snakies. We are back for day two of our rack installation, and the second rack I'm more excited for. I mean, I'm excited for the first one, too. But this one, even though it has smaller bins, the bins are clear, which is a new thing that ARS just recently rolled out. We haven't replaced these racks yet. I mean, we've been wanting to for a while, but we couldn't find a rack that had clear bins until finally, uh, just now we saw that ARS had them. So today's project is to replace this rack and that rack with the new one that we just got in, and this one we're going to hang on to because it has bigger bins in it. We're just going to slide it over or something. So we have a lot of work ahead of us, but I can't wait to see this new rack set up. Mm -hmm. The first thing we have to do, though, is remove all these snakes. Oh, and I don't have any tropical bedding. We have salamanders in these racks. Yep. Oh, so I'm going to have to run to town to buy dirt, and then come back, and then I'll remove all the snakes, and we'll get going. There we go. This room looks so different with only one rack in there. Oh my gosh, that rack's gone, that rack's gone. I vacuumed up a little bit, cleaned the walls, and I mean, I'm gonna have to clean it all again when they move to the facility, but still, this looks so different. What do you think, Shan? What do you think? Yeah, I had to shut your cage door because you were trying to help too much. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll let you out afterwards. Oh gosh, this is our bedroom now. I had enough lids for most of the bins so I could just slap on a lid and bring them out. But I couldn't find all the lids, so the rest of the animals I just put in travel carriers. Some were from these big bins, some were from smaller bins. So I kind of had to make do with what I had, but... They're not very happy. Houdini, I know you for sure would escape if I didn't put you in this. Yeah, because I didn't have a lid for your bin, so good luck getting out now. It's going to take forever to disinfect all their water dishes and caves and stuff, but I want it to be clean for the new rack, so I'm going to start cleaning. Oh, it is time for the second rack. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Like, how did they puzzle a whole rack into that box? 
Oh, this one has a lot more to it than the other ones. <laughs> oh, yep, this one we're going to have to set up. This might take a little bit longer. It's a good oh, thing we see. zoomed through the first one. Yeah. Okay, so these are all of our heat panels. Yep. Nice, that goes in the back of each shelf. Okay, can I give you these yes. to bring inside? Sure. And then I will come in with all these. Okay, I will bring this inside. So we got the first stuff out. Now yep. let's see what's underneath this cardboard. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, there's the clear tubs. They're so pretty. Yeah, they are. Wow, these are huge too. I was expecting a lot smaller. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay, this is gonna be like a big puzzle for us. I guess first thing we can do is bring all our tubs inside. Okay. Uh, how many do we have? One, two, three, eight, nine, ten. Ten, ten twenty, thirty, forty. 40 oh my gosh. Here. I forgot how many tubs there were. This is gonna fit so many snakes. Yes, it will. Well, this should do everything those do and more. That's right. If I've, the calculations are right, so. Oh, we'll have room for more snakes. Yeah, should we start bringing things in? Yeah, let's start bringing it inside. You can just carry the whole box in one, can't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm that strong. <sighs> Don't wanna make it to seem like I'm doing all the work. Yeah, I'm sure that's what the fans are thinking right now. And there we have all the pieces to the new ARS rack. We've got the tubs. We've got the. We've got the. You sure? Nope. Okay. <laughs> we've got the tubs. We have what I think goes above the tubs. We have the tracks that they go on. We have those things and those things and and the power strip. I know what that is. Well, we double checked and we have everything that the instructions say we should have, except for we had to go buy a rubber mallet. But now we get to take everything and run it upstairs into the snake room and start building. So kudos to whoever made the instructions, ARS. These are amazing. You actually took pictures of things and put arrows to help illustrate what needs to go where. And that is helping tremendously. Okay, I'm standing as far back as I can because Cheyenne's cage is on the other side of me here. She's very confused as to what's going on. But now we're working on putting Velcro on these supports so that the heat panel can stick right onto them and heat the back eh, four to six inches or so of each bin. There we go. is. Yeah. There's Ed who needs a haircut. Yeah, I am. You need to shave too, buddy. No. Yeah, you look like a hobo. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. It's hobo chic. Look at that. It's beautiful. I'm so happy right now. Do you want to set up tubs? Yeah, let's put tubs in. Uh, I need to get them out for you because you can't do it. Yeah, the one difficult part about this setup because all that was surprisingly easy. Just work. Just work, yep. Yeah. I can't pull these apart. ARS! There's no way to detach these! There's no way, huh? There's no way. It's impossible. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You thought you were gonna show up, huh? There we go. Okay. Okay, so it is possible if you have an Ed. Yep, you just need an Ed. He needs to come with and help the install. <laughs> we bought this rack, we had the option to have bins with pre-built-in water dish holders. And for those, what people do is they get like plastic cups to place into those holders. And then every week they throw out the cups and put in a new cup for water. We, however, don't like using things that are just a one-time use and then you throw them out. So I decided to get the bins without those holders so that we can use an actual water dish that we just clean and reuse every week. Wow, Emily, you got a nice rack there. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So the reason why we chose this rack is because it fits a lot more bins that are bigger bins, but in a smaller 
area overall. So even though we're going from two racks to one here, we still have more room for snakes. And let me show you a little bit more of what I mean there. We have the two bins here. This is what we used to use from our old rack, and this is a bin from this new rack we just set up. We have them flipped upside down because if you look here, the sides kind of go out a little bit uh, as you go up. So we're trying to find the minimum amount of space that they hold. So in reality, they actually are a little bit bigger than this too. But the old bins we were using were 20 inches by 13 inches by six inches deep. That's 1,560 cubic inches of space. Whereas the new rack is 30 and a half by 10 and a half by six. Same depth? Yeah, six. Okay, same depth. Same depth times six. And this was actually 1920 cubic inches. So even though it looks and it is thinner, it's so much longer that it more than makes up for that fact and actually gives the snakes more room inside, considerably more space too. So that's uh, one of the main reasons why we switched to this rack is because not only are we able to fit more in one unit, but the snakes themselves have more room too. So they're going to be happier with this as well. So now we get to put bedding in. I'm going to clean all their decorations and put all the snakes back into this brand new rack. Oh, you know what I just realized though? Hmm. We're not going to be able to use the stickers from the old rack because you can't take those off. So we'll have to put all new stickers on the new rack. Oh no. What we're doing is we have like a snake in a travel bin and then all of their decor, the stuff that they're used to on top. And then once this is all clean and sanitized and steam cleaned, I'm just taking it and setting it up in the bin that they're going to go in. Oh, hi, Ed. There. And then, based on memory with the four of us, two friends of ours and Ed and myself, we'll be able to remember whose set of decor goes with each snake. Because, I mean, we work with them every week, so we'll be able to know who goes where. We are trying to organize it, though. So we have hog noses near the top, bull snakes that we're raising up in the middle, and then miscellaneous North American colubrids near the bottom. So there, there is some method to our madness here. Well, 11 hours later, we have all of the bins set up and all of the decor for each animal has been scrubbed down and steam cleaned thanks to our friends Nick and Danae who came over and helped us out this evening. It's like midnight, but it was so worth it because look at how amazing that is. You can't see half of it because all our snakes and um, travel bins down here. But that's what we're going to do next is move the snakes from their travel bins into their new bins up here. They have all the same decor, so they have something familiar to them. Now, who knows if they're actually gonna recognize that? I think they might, so we kept the same decor with each animal. And we're probably not gonna show you putting every animal in, because we're filling up most of the rack, actually. But we'll still show you probably the snakes you just haven't seen in a while on the channel. This is our pastel het toffee belly hognose snake. The pastel gene apparently kind of clears up the background noise in between the blotches. And you know, he is pretty, like, lightly colored. However, I'm still not convinced that he's just a really pretty normal. But we'll breed him and we'll find out. So he goes up here in this bin. Look at all this space that he has! And he's gonna go right into the first cave he found. Yep. Of course. Disappear instantly. Yep. That's how it goes. Instead of doing the rest of our boys, which are going to take up all these plus that one, let's move on to the girl hognose snakes, which girls are in this row, this row, and this row. We have oh, a lot geez. of... Yeah, I didn't realize that till today, but we have a lot of girls. Here is one of my favorite ones. This is Charlotte. She is our albino hognose snake. Oh, you're on the move today. Do you just want to go into your new bin? Okay. Charlotte, look! It's all of your same toys. Just in a different bin. Go check it out. It's like, what? what is this place? Got, to, got her some really deep bedding, too, for all the hog noses. Then they can dig around. Oh, they're going to have fun. Here's another one of our female hog noses. You may recognize her from earlier this year. This is Omnomlet. She thought her babies were food. Yes, you ate your babies. Yes, you did. But you did indeed all of them. Ed caught you in time. Got some. Yep, yeah. yeah, there was just bedding. Yeah, got it. <laughs> Here, look, a new baby-free environment. Go check it out. Where are you gonna go? You digging under your plant? Oh, yep. Yeah. There she goes. Yep, straight down. 
Next up is our sable phase hognose snake. She is a lot darker in color, which is what the sable morph does, and that's a basic recessive trait. So she is uh, a full of visual sable, and we're going to pair her next year with a het sable male, and we should get some beautiful sable babies out of them. She does, however, have a big attitude. Yes, you do. You have a big attitude. Wait, that smells familiar, but something's different. Here, I'll just set you in, and you figure it out. I'd imagine they're just going to be exploring all oh, night, yeah. checking things out. She doesn't move very much. No, she doesn't. Okay, next we should do one that I think a lot of people really like. All right. The lavender. All right. Here's the lavender female hog. Isn't she beautiful, guys? She's grown so much this year. She's totally going to be ready to breed next year, assuming she takes. She's even maybe a little bit on the heftier side, so we're actually feeding her every other week to prevent her from getting more overweight, because I think she's a little bit too heavy. But yeah, she's she's a wonderful eater, that's for sure. She's uh, one of my favorites. Although, if, Sable's your favorite, right? Yep. Yeah, you like the sable? Okay, yeah, I really like the lavender. Look, you get more space now. I mean, it's a little bit bigger than your last one. You're just gonna plow right through the bedding? Yep. So apparently, you just set a hog nose in and they go down. Yeah, they just immediately start digging. Mm -hmm. Well, should we move on to a bull snake? Sure. All right. This is a female ghost that we held back from last year, and she has quite the attitude. She's actually pretty calm right now. Oh, well. But she's usually super hissy because... I don't know, it's just her attitude, I she's guess. I like think that's a ghost thing. It might be a ghost thing, yeah. She, right now, she's a little bit more calmed down because she's been in the bin for about 11 hours while we worked on this project, and she's just tired of it, I think. Uh, it's also midnight. Yeah, yeah, it is late. They're all asleep right now. Yeah. We're waking them all up. Oh, there we go. There's that attitude I know. Don't hiss. That was yourself that you just hissed at. All right, fine. Let's just put you in. Look, you have the cave that a fan sent us. She really, whoever sent it, I can't remember exactly who sent us this, but it's a handmade wooden cave, and it, they did such a good job on it, and this ghost bull snake really likes it. Oh, never mind, she's gone. Yep, she's digging down too. I think she's right here. There's her face. There's the ink. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Next up is one of the high bull snakes that we produced actually two years ago. She's a little bit small for her age. I don't know why she's a little bit small, but she's a good eater. She seems great otherwise, so she's growing at a, you know, slow but sure rate. I love this pattern and the color combo. It's just beautiful, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad we held her back. Mm -hmm. Again, she is a high bino, so she's a combination of a hypo and an albino, and we had to hold her back as soon as she hatched. We're probably going to make another order for a couple more of those really big racks just for all of our holdback bull snakes, but that'll work for a couple months. Next up is our Eastern Hognose Snake Sparkles. He is by far one of my favorites. You are so cute. Yes, and you eat mice, and you're such a good eater. So I spoil him with lots of toys. Go check it out. Oh, and there he goes. I don't know where he's going. I don't think he knows either. But he's going to have fun exploring that tonight. Next, let's do Onyx, our Mexican Black King Snake. You haven't seen her in a while. She's doing great. She's growing nicely, and she should be ready for breeding in probably another year or so. But she is a, man, she's a gorgeous snake. I just love that. It's, it's not a black. They're like a very dark chocolatey brown color, technically. But they're still, you know, called the Mexican Black King Snake. Go take a look. Oh, gonna go right into your enrichment, I guess. Oh, and out of it. She really likes her helmet, and sometimes we'll feed her in it and flip it upside down so she can eat inside, and then she curls up and doesn't leave. So sometimes her helmet stays upside down because she really likes to curl up in it. Time for things with legs. This is Chuck. He is one of our African fat-tailed geckos. He's actually the one that joins me at programs. Well, before COVID hit, he would join me at almost all of my programs because he's so handleable, so sweet. He's a great eater, too. And, you know, I just realized the geckos are going to have so much space oh, in yeah. these. Holy cow, because they had a lot of room before with those 28 mm -hmm. cords. But these, oh, man. Here, dude. You need, to, you need to see your enclosure. Look at all that space. It's all for you. You're not going to know what to do. Here's our other male. This is an amelanistic fat-tailed gecko that we got at a Tinley show a couple of years ago. He's doing really well, too. Now, being a slightly more tropical species than a leopard gecko, they actually do seem to do really well on the EcoEarth and Cypress Mulch blend. I've found it works really well for them, but I still also add a humidity box in the back. 
And last but not least, some amphibians. The bottommost shelf here, we actually unplugged the heating element because it's all for amphibians. The first bin here is going to be for our toads, and the second, third, and fourth bins are all going to be for our tiger salamanders. I have a few of these because I like to rotate them at programs. Since they have more sensitive skin, since of course they're not covered in protective scales, being amphibians, they, I feel, need more breaks between programs, so that's why I kind of rotate between them all. This one is probably the most well-known salamander on our channel. This is Thomas! He's a tiger salamander that we got after he had been attacked by what we assume a dog that ripped off his front left leg. And so we actually have a whole video about him regrowing the entire leg. It's still, for those of you who have known him for, you know, the duration of us having him, that leg still is smaller than the original one. You can tell based on how much smaller it is than his right foot. But it works! I mean, that's all he needs it for is for, for a leg to propel himself forward. So he's been doing really, really well. He's an awesome eater. He'd probably try to eat my finger. Now, oh, yep, there we go. That's Thomas for you. He loves to eat. I'm sorry, you can't eat my finger. No, I'll feed you, okay? It's just not right now. Look at all your space! <laughs> What if I pose you on there? He's pretty lazy unless he's begging for food. Well, those were some of the more notable reptiles on our channel, or I guess just some of the snakes you haven't seen in a while. This is Sunny Side Up. She is the scaleless corn snake that we got from Don Soderberg at South Mountain Reptiles. She is doing great. She's growing really well. But yeah, I'd like to thank, of course, our Patreon backers for supporting this channel. It was some of your funds that helped us get this new rack and the other rack too from earlier in this video. So thank you so much for allowing us to upgrade some of our reptiles. I think it turned out amazing, and I think this lavender hog nose thinks so too. It, it was a little intimidating at first, I'll say, when we first opened up the box, but it wasn't really too hard to put together. No, I would say the other one's so much easier though. It is, because it's already one, put it's together. all put together, you just load it up and put it where you need it to be. <laughs> it's true, but this I mean, one... it's it's worth the effort yeah. to put it together. This is an amazing I mean, rack. it still took less time than putting one of these together. Yeah, absolutely. So. Again, thank you everybody for hanging out with us today, watching us upgrade some of our snakes into a new rack, and stay tuned for me filling up the rest of the bins with residents. You're a hognose snake. I shouldn't need a hook for you. Yeah. <laughs>